Welcome back. In this video, we'll see how we can write our game number Java class for our game number web application. Recall from our design diagrams that we plan to have a game number class. Here we see the UML class diagram. In this class diagram, we see that we will have one field in the game number class. It will be called value and it will be an int data type. We see that there will be two constructors one default constructor with no parameters, and the second will be able to provide an int value to set the initial value of the game number object. We'll have a setter and a getter. We'll also have two very specific methods that we will create for this class, set random. The idea for this method is that we can provide a min and a max value, and it will return a random integer that is somewhere between the min and the max values provided. The increment method will simply take the current value of a game number object and it will add one to it. So here we are back at our Eclipse project. Let's double click on the game number.java class file. After double clicking on the class file name, we now see in the editor the stub for this file. One trick in Eclipse, if you double click on the tab, the editor will expand to take up the full window. You can double click again to return it to the regular web application perspective. From our UML diagram, we should see that there should be one field, and we call it value and give it an int data type. A best practice is to always make your field level variables private. Then use public getters and setters to allow other classes to have access to your field variables. This is part of a concept of object-oriented programming known as encapsulation, also called information hiding. It allows the creator of the class to have more control over how his fields are accessed. Private int value. Where possible in creating this class, I'm going to show you some neat tricks in Eclipse to make it go faster. I need a couple of constructors. Let's click on the source menu. Notice there's a bunch of items on the source menu that are called generate. We'll use generate getters and setters in a moment. But let's use for now generate constructor using fields. Recall we're going to have two constructors. One is a default constructor with no parameters. The second will provide an integer value that we could use to initialize the field level variable called value. So first, let's make a default constructor. We'll let it generate comments. We'll omit default constructor super. And we'll make sure that value is not selected. Click OK. Notice it quickly generated the code for our constructor. Let's go into this constructor and initialize our value variable equal to 0. I just chose 0 arbitrarily. When this constructor is called, probably the class will call a setter to set the actual value. Similarly, let's create another constructor. This time, leave value checked and see what happens when we hit OK. Our second constructor is basically created for us. Notice in this constructor that a local parameter called value, which is an int, will be passed to the constructor. Then the single executable statement inside of this constructor will set our field level variable called value equal to the local parameter value. In addition to our two constructors, we also wanted to have a getter and a setter for our field level variable. Most Java classes that you'll find in the model will have a getter and a setter pair for each of their field level variables. Since we only have one field level variable, we will have only one pair of getters and setters. Click on Source Menu, and then select Generate Getters and Setters. You can expand value and choose whether you want a getter or a setter or both. In this case, I want both, so I will click next to Value, and you notice they're all selected. Check the other things real quick. Insertion Point. Let's put after last member. Sort by getters and setter pairs. Doesn't make much difference since there's only one pair. I generally prefer to have getters and setter pairs together, so I'll always check this one. But it is possible to use all the getters and then the setters, based on your preference. And then the access modifier for the getters and setters should be public. Let's click OK. 
you'll notice that basically by generating our getters and setters, we've done everything we need to do to get our getter and setter methods. The getter, get value, will return whatever the value is for the field variable. The set value will take in a parameter, which is an integer, and is local to the method, or will set the field level value equal to that local value. Let's have a quick look again at our UML class diagram. We have already created our field called value. We've created our two constructors, and we've created our setter and getter pair. Only two methods left. Since these are methods which we are making tailor-made for our particular application, they don't have a generate option in Eclipse. So with no generate option in Eclipse, we'll have to create these ourselves. Let's start with the set random. Type public. This will be a public method. Let's type void. We're just going to set the initial value here instead of returning an int. Public void set random. And then we want two parameters. One, let's call it int, and let's just call it minimum. This will represent the minimum value in the range. And then maximum. So here's the stub, or our set random method. We're basically going to want to be able to have a statement that will take this dot value and set it equal to some random variable. It turns out there's a Java class called random. So let's create one of those, random equals new random. Notice we see an error message. This is because this happens to be in a package where a random class is not automatically available to our Java class. So we need to import it. First, put your cursor over the error message and notice that in Eclipse we actually have an option of several quick fixes available. Up to 12 different things we could do. This is very nice because it helps remind us of the possibilities and possibly the reason for our error or our incomplete use of the code. When you see a list like this, you always really want to know which one it is and don't always pick the one on the top. That's an assumption made on Eclipse's part and may not be what you want. In this case, it is exactly what we want. We want to import random. So let's actually click on that. It's like a hyperlink. Notice the error signal went away. Also, if we scroll up, we can see that an import statement has actually been added to our Java class. So what we're going to do is use this random object that we have now. I'm going to say this dot value equals, use our random dot. Notice it has several things here. Next int is a nice method that will return a random integer in between 0 and whatever the value that is provided as a parameter. So that's a good method to use here. However, the parameter needs some work. We actually want a value between min and maximum. What would happen if we were just to use maximum? Well, in this case, it almost works because it would return a value in between 0 and our maximum. And as long as our minimum is 0, this is fine. But what happens if the minimum value is 200? For instance, if we wanted to go from 200 to 500, we'd really need to take maximum minus minimum. That would give us a range of 300. So it would give us a random number between 0 and 300. And then we can add that random number back to our minimum. Think about that for a little bit. And you'll think about how that would work for any range that we might want to have. Our final method, public, void, increment, no parameters in this case. Although you might think of another increment method which might allow us to add different values than one. In this case, we're going to keep it simple. Use this dot value and plus plus. That should do. I'm pretty confident in this particular game number, but in most cases, you don't want to be overconfident and you want to test. In our next video, we will look at how we might create a J unit test to make sure that our methods that we created will work correctly whenever the game number object is created. This has been a Piercy production.